the aspects of the maxillary first premolar and the detailed description of all aspects for the maxillary second premolar. The mesial aspect of the maxillary first premolar is characterized by having a trapezoidal geometric outline. The trapezoid is different from the trapezoid found for the facial and lingual surface of all teeth in that it's inverted. The longest of the two parallel sides is usually toward the cervix or cervical area, while the shortest of the two parallel sides is near the occlusal aspect or surface. This configuration brings the tips of both cusps, the buccal and lingual cusps, are within the confines of the root trunk. Or, in another word, if we measure the distance between the buccal cusp tip and the lingual cusp tip, it's shorter than the buccal-lingual dimension of the cervical portion of the root. So this will enable the tooth to perform its function properly without transmitting unnecessarily heavy forces to the supporting structures. And this configuration is found for all the proximal surfaces, mesial and distal, of all maxillary posterior teeth. Now moving to the cervical, buccal, and lingual outlines of the maxillary first premolar from mesial aspect. Usually the cervical lines show less curvature than found in the anterior teeth, which is a characteristic feature for all posterior teeth. The curvature may be only one millimeter, as you can notice here, the depth of the curvature is only one millimeter. The buccal outline is usually convex below the cervical line, then it becomes straight toward the tip of the buccal cusp. While the lingual outline is usually smoothly convex or curved from the cervical line to the tip of the lingual cusp. Now the location of the crest of curvatures or heights of contour buccally and lingually. The buccal height of contour is usually located at the junction between the cervical and the middle third. So this is the location for the buccal crest of curvature or height of contour. While the lingual crest of curvature is usually located in the center or the middle of the middle third of the crown. Regarding the occlusal outline, the buccal cusp is usually larger and longer than the lingual cusp. The difference is one millimeter in length between the two cusps, as was mentioned before. This is because the lingual cusp is developed from single lobe, while the buccal cusp is developed from three lobes. Also, the location of the Tips of buccal and lingual cusp can be noticed from this aspect. Usually both cusp tips are in line with their respective root apex. So as can you as you can notice here, the tip of the buccal cusp is located in line with the apex of the buccal root while the tip of the lingual cusp is in line with the apex of the lingual root. Also from the mesial aspect you can see or you can you can see the triangular ridges of both buccal and lingual cusps. This is the buccal cusp and this is the triangular ridge of the buccal cusp and this is the triangular ridge of the lingual cusp can be both can be seen converging toward the central uh, occlusal plane or occlusal surface. Also here we can see the cusp bridges. This is the mesobuccal cusp bridge and this is the mesiolingual cusp bridge. Why? This is the mesial marginal ridge. The mesial marginal ridge is convex as it's noticed here and usually located at the junction between the middle and occlusal thirds of the crown. So the mesial marginal ridge is at the junction between the middle and occlusal thirds of the crown. Regarding the outlines of the root and the root trunk, 
Usually the root trunk of the maxilla first premolar is long. It represents about half the length of the root. The root trunk represents half the length of the root. It is bifurcated into a buccal root and lingual root. The buccal root may show slight tendency toward lingual inclination. And as was mentioned earlier, the apex of each root is blunt and in line with the tip of its respective cusp. So each apex is in line with the tip of its respective cusp. As you can notice here, if only one root is present, usually the buccal and lingual outlines will end into a blunt apex and the apex is in line with the center of the crown occlusally. Will be in, in line with the center of the crown occlusally. Now moving to the surface anatomy of the mesial aspect. The mesial aspect have certain uh, anatomical landmarks that, is, that are unique for the maxillary first premolar and help to distinguish this tooth from the maxillary second premolar. First, the position of the mesial contact area. Usually, it is a broad and circular in shape and located slightly occlusal to the center of the crown. So this is the center of the crown. If we measure, this is the, roughly the center of the crown. So it's slightly occlusal to the center of the crown and it is toward the buccal, not in the center of the crown. It's more toward the buccal of the, or buccal surface. Another characteristic feature of this tooth is the presence of mesial developmental depression on the mesial aspect of the crown. This depression or concavity starts just cervical to the mesial contact area. So this is the mesial contact area, and here we have a depression or concavity in the crown surface that extends and beyond the cervical area. So this is, as you can notice here, the mesial developmental depression. Usually it continues and joins a deep developmental depression between the buccal and lingual roots. This is a deep developmental depression and the groove between the two roots and will end at the bifurcation area. So this is the unique characteristic for the maxillary first premolar. Another characteristic feature is that the mesial marginal ridge, which is convex, is usually notched by the presence of this groove, which is named the mesial marginal developmental groove. So the mesial uh, developmental depression and the mesial marginal developmental grooves are characteristic features for this tooth, for the mesial aspect of this tooth. While regarding the root trunk and the buccal and lingual roots, usually the root trunk is smoothly convex and there is developmental groove and depression, which will uh, lead to the bifurcation area, as mentioned earlier. And in case of single root, or if the tooth was one-rooted, this depression will be noticed for most of the root length, as you can notice here. Depression is noticeable, and this is the mesial developmental depression. Moving to the distal aspect. A uh, little difference can be found between the distal and mesial aspects of the maxillary first premolar. The main differences are, first, less curvature of the cervical line. Sometimes it may, may be found in a form of straight line, as you can notice here. This is a feature that is found in all posterior teeth. The distal marginal ridge, as you can notice here, is usually smooth and devoid of any grooves. It's not, uh, not notched like the mesial marginal ridge and usually located slightly more cervically than the mesial marginal ridge. The distal contact area is broader and more vocally located, also ex nearly at the same level, slightly occlusal to the center of the crown, but it is broader and more vocally placed. The root trunk is flattened, as you can notice, the surface of the crown is convex, smooth, there is no depression here, and the rooted trunk also is flattened with no depression or deep grooves as found on the mesial aspect. But the bifurcation area is usually at a higher level. The bifurcation of the root 
is located at a higher level distally. It's more apical than the bifurcation area on the mesial aspect. Now moving to the occlusal aspect. First, the geometric outline of this tooth from the occlusal aspect is hexagonal figure with n equal sides. So we have a six-sided or hexagonal figure that has n equal sides. So this is a hexagon. This is the buccal. This is the mesial. This is the distal. And this is the lingual. So this side is named the mesiobuccal. This is the mesial, the mesiolingual, the distolingual, distal, and distobuccal. So as mentioned, these sides are unequal. Usually the mesiobuccal and distobuccal are nearly of the same length. The mesial side is shorter than the distal, and the mesiolingual is shorter than the distolingual. Also, it can be noticed that the buccolingual dimension of this tooth, like most of the posterior teeth, especially the maxillary posterior teeth, the buccolingual dimension is more or greater than the mesiodistal dimension. Also, the location of the distal crest or distal contact area is usually slightly buccal to the mesial. The distal is buccal to the mesial. Usually the occlusal surface is bordered by the cusp bridges and the mesial and distal marginal ridges. So the borders of the occlusal plane will be formed by, this is the mesial buccal cusp ridge, this is the distal buccal cusp ridge of the buccal cusp, this is the lingual cusp and these are the mesial lingual and distal lingual cusp ridges and this is the tip of the cusp of the lingual cusp and this the tip of the buccal cusp. This is the mesial marginal ridge and this is the distal, the distal marginal ridges. So these are the borders of the occlusal table or the occlusal surface of the maxillary first premolar. Usually the mesiobuccal and distobuccal cusp ridges are on line with each other, while the mesiolingual and distolingual are more curved and form a semicircular outline that is confluent with the mesial and distal marginal ridges. Regarding surface anatomy of the occlusal surface, usually, as mentioned earlier, the occlusal surface has two cusps, buccal and lingual. The buccal cusp is larger than the lingual cusp, it has a larger mesodistal dimension compared with the lingual cusp. Each cusp has four cusp ridges that are descending from the tip of the cusp toward or in four different directions. So this is the tip of the buccal cusp. We have four ridges, one toward the buccal, one mesial, one distal, and one lingual. The same applies for the lingual ridge. We have mesial, ridge, buccal, distal, and lingual. The lingual cusp or the lingual cusp ridge of the buccal cusp is termed the buccal triangular ridge. So this ridge has a unique name. It's called the buccal triangular ridge or it can be shown better in this figure. This is the buccal triangular ridge. While the buccal cusp, buccal, sorry, buccal cusp ridge of the lingual cusp is termed the lingual triangular ridge. So this is the lingual triangular ridge. So we have two triangular ridges, the buccal triangular ridge of the buccal cusp and the lingual triangular ridge of the lingual cusp. So when we have two triangular ridges opposing each other, they will form what's called the transverse ridge. Also, there is the mesial triangular fossa and distal triangular fossa. The triangular fossa, if you recall, is a 3D depression, resembles an inverted pyramid, found mesial and distal to each marginal ridge. 
So distal to the mesial marginal ridge, we have the mesial triangular fossa. This is the mesial triangular fossa. And mesial to the distal marginal ridge, there is the distal triangular fossa. Another anatomical landmark is the central groove. This is the central groove. Usually it's a well-defined groove found in the bottom of the sulcus of the occlusal surface. Usually it divides the tooth equally into two portions buccolingually. Also, there is a mesobuccal developmental groove and stabuccal developmental groove. These grooves usually join the central groove mesially and distally. So this is the mesobuccal developmental groove and this is the distabuccal developmental groove. Also, there is the mesial marginal developmental groove. This groove extends from the central groove mesially across the mesial marginal ridge and then ends on the mesial aspect of the crown. So the mesial marginal ridge is notched by the mesial developmental group or mesial marginal developmental group while the distal marginal ridge is smooth and devoid of any uh, groove. Finally, there is the mesial and distal developmental pits at the junction between the central group and the mesobuccal developmental group there is a pinpoint depression called the mesial developmental pit, while at the junction between the central group and the distobuccal developmental group, there is another depression called the distal developmental pit. Now moving to the maxillary second premolar. The maxillary second premolar resembles the maxillary first premolar very closely. Both supplement each other in function. The maxillary second premolar is closer to the uh, maxillary first molar, so it assists the molar in its function of grinding food. So there are a few differences between the maxillary second and first premolar. First, the maxillary permanent second premolar is more variable in size compared with the maxillary first premolar. So sometimes it can be smaller, sometimes or in many cases they are of similar average dimensions. However, the maxillary second premolar in some cases may be smaller or may be even larger than the maxillary first premolar. The maxillary second premolar is less angular as it's obvious in all aspects from the buccal, lingual, mesial or distal and even occlusal. It's less angular compared with the maxillary first premolar. And finally, it has a single root rather than two. The main differences between the two premolars. First, the buccal cusp is shorter and less pointed. First, this is the maxillary left second premolar and not the right. This is the maxillary left. So the buccal cusp is shorter and less pointed compared with maxillary first premolar. The mesial slope of the cusp, so since this is a left, this is the mesial and this is the distal. So the mesial cusp slope is shorter than the distal cusp slope, just like the maxillary canine and opposite to the maxillary first premolar. The buccal ridge of the crown is less prominent, as you can notice here, is less prominent than that for the first premolar. The crown and the root near the cervical portion usually thicker, this portion, the crown and root is thicker in this tooth compared with the maxillary first premolar. From the lingual aspect, very difference or very small differences or little differences can be found between these two teeth. From the mesial aspect, this is the mesial. So this is the buccal and this is the lingual. This is the buccal cusp and this is the lingual cusp. The cusps in general of the maxillary second premolar are shorter. This means the slopes of the cusp. In general, the length, the cervical occlusal length of the crown of the second premolar is, in most of the cases, similar to the length of the maxillary first premolar. However, the slopes of the cusp are shorter. The slopes are shorter. 
The distance between the cusp tips, the buccal and lingual cusp tips, is wider, as you can notice here, which will widen the occlusal plane. The crown is convex, there is no developmental depressions. As you can notice, the crown is smooth, there is no developmental depression. However, on the root, there is a, sh a shallow developmental depression on the root, on the single root. Not like the mesial aspect of the maxillary first premolar, where the developmental groove and depression was deep on the mesial aspect. Here we can, uh, you can notice the difference between the maxillary first premolar, the single root type, and the maxillary second premolar. As you can notice here, the crown is smooth and convex for in case of maxillary second premolar, while here there is the developmental depression, the mesial developmental depression, and there is a deep developmental depression and a groove extending across the entire length or almost the entire length of the root of the single root, while here there is a shallow depression extending across the root surface. The distal aspect, usually the main differences between the distal and mesial aspect is that the distal root depression is deeper here, as you can notice, the depression is deeper and larger on the distal aspect compared with the mesial aspect, and this is the opposite for the situation found in the maxillary first premolar, where the mesial developmental depression is much deeper than the distal developmental depression. Finally, the occlusal aspect of the uh, maxillary second premolar, usually the outline is more rounded or oval. It's not angular or uh, hexagonal as found in the maxillary first premolar. The distance between the cusps is wide. Also, the central developmental group is rather short or shorter compared with the maxillary first premolar. It's more irregular. There are many supplemental groups, as you can notice here, many groups radiating from this central groove, which will give the occlusal surface a very or a much wrinkled appearance compared with that of the maxillary first premolar.